Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. If you're one of my subscribers, thanks for coming back. If this is the first time to the channel, think about hitting the subscribe button and helping me out. So winter's coming. It's uh, the week before Christmas now, or the weekend before Christmas. And a lot of the guys on the forums are talking about uh, having problems getting their, getting their tractor started, or they're worried about starting them with, with it being so cold. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to do a how-to video on the installation of a, of a uh, block heater. So for me, it's not that big a deal. I live on the southern border of Virginia, right on the border of North Carolina, and it really doesn't get that cold here. But like I said, a lot of the guys up north are having problems or they're, they're worried about having problems starting up in the winter. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to do a how-to video on the installation of a block heater. We're going to use my Coyote CK3510SE, but really I think this would... this. This could be done on just about any tractor, any compact tractor, or a big tractor for that matter. So let's get to it. All right, let's go over what we're gonna need. First thing, uh, just a hammer and a chisel. That's to pound out the freeze plug. Need a little pliers, uh, Permatex, uh, form a gasket. This is the hard setting stuff. It's designed to stick together rigid stuff. So. Uh, like freeze plugs, for example. The heater itself, nothing fancy. It's going to be the CATS, uh, CATS heaters, part number 11409X. I'll put a link for this down in the description. This is going to be the actual heating element itself. And you're going to need a 32 millimeter uh, insert. Basically, this thing, this part here, we'll put that Permatex on it. We'll insert it into the block and drive it in with the socket and extension. Once it's in, we'll give it 24 hours to, to cure, the Permatex to cure, and then the heating element just gets screwed in like that, and then it gets plugged in. So that's it. Straightforward. Let's get it done. All right, Drain Petcock is right here. Straightforward. You know, make sure you put a clean bucket underneath it before you drain into it, because we're going to reuse this, this antifreeze. So the freeze plug we're going to shoot for is this one right here. It's right above the starter. So let's get the punch and see if we can't knock it out. All right, so the trick to these is to try to knock them right on the edge in here. All right, so what I did is to get this going, I just tap on the bottom and the plug starts rotating out. You'll lose some coolant. It's not the end of the world. I got the bucket underneath there trying to catch as much of it as I can. There's no good way for me to put the camera in there and hit it at the same time. So... I'll, uh, I'll try to get it out a little farther and get the camera back on it so you guys can see how it's done. Something to consider when you're doing this is make sure you guys are ready with the bucket and something to divert the coolant that comes out of the block. It ends up bouncing off the starter, which isn't the end of the world, but... I just put a piece of piece of cardboard there to divert it. All right, so from here you can see that the entire freeze plug is just rotated out. And from there, it pulls right out, that's it. The remainder of this coolant's gonna leak out. As we need to get this down so that it's dry, so that the Permatec will We'll adhere to it. This is definitely a super easy DIY project. No reason to pay you guys as uh, your dealers to do this. I want to say the sleeve was like $16, and the heater might have been $35. Tube of Permatex is five bucks. You know, so you're in it for 60 bucks at most, maybe. You know, after you buy a, after you buy some ethylene glycol coolant. That's the freeze plug. Again, it was super easy. I just put the, the punch right in here, the chisel right in here. I lightly tapped it on the bottom and it just kind of rotates it till it's sitting like this. From there, you just grab your, your pliers and you can pull it right out. I know a lot of people, you know, they get concerned that they're gonna knock it all the way into the engine. There's just no way that's gonna happen. That only goes in 
about an inch and the casting on the block just it just won't let it happen so uh you know don't go hammering on it with a five pound sledgehammer but you can tap it in you're not going to lose that freeze plug in the engine it'll come right out you're going to make a complete mess i drain the radiator uh, but it doesn't get everything in the block obviously so with that said, you know get ready to catch it and get ready some get ready with something to divert it off the starter because you kind of spray it on the starter if I had to do this again I would have uh, <laughs> I would have probably tried to think about that so I made a bit of a mess you know no big deal I picked up a gallon of uh, ethylene glycol to top it off I knew I'd, I'd lose some of it so all right you kind of get it dried up we're just gonna take some emery cloth and uh, just try to clean that up in a little bit. Again, pretty straightforward. It's really kind of impossible to do with the camera. All right, so you give it a few taps, well, more than a few. You smack it in there good and tight, and we're gonna let it sit for 24 hours, and we'll fill everything back up, and we'll put the heating element in. So we'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. Okay, so we'll get ready to, to insert the heater. What we wanna do is we wanna wrap the threads with some Teflon tape. That way we, we get them lubed up, and we can get it tight enough, and hopefully it doesn't leak. So just a couple wraps on it, and uh, Let's go put it in. All right, this thing should just slide right in. All right, you're gonna need an inch and an eighth wrench for this. That's pretty tight. Let's cover a couple of the additional tools that we need uh, that we didn't go over in the beginning. So I ended up needing a, a open end wrench. It's an inch and one eighth. I also ended up needing a, a screwdriver for some leverage and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you do decide to put it there in the middle, what happens is there's no room to get the wrench in. So I just put it in straight on like that then I used the screwdriver as leverage on this side and I was able to tighten it. Another thing you wanna keep an eye on are the contacts inside of the heater. Uh, if you're gonna put it here, make sure that they're oriented so that you can plug the, the cord into the back side of it. Otherwise, it'll end, up, uh, it'll end up giving you some problems, so. So let's get some cool in this and see if it leaks. Okay, we ran it up the temp, let the thermostat open. We came down here and checked just to make sure there was no leaks and there isn't any. Uh, again, plugging this in is, is not that difficult. It's got the two holes. You just line them up with the two prongs inside the heater and just push it. Uh, really nothing to it. Again, the starter's in the way. I can't get this retainer clip on there. So my plan actually was not to use it anyway. I was just gonna plug it in when I needed it. And when I didn't need it, I was just going to unplug it and I was going to put a cap right here. Uh, you know, I guess without a cap, you could definitely get a bunch of junk and water and crap in there, especially if you're pushing snow and whatnot. Uh, again, not the best spot for it. If I had to do it over again, I would put it in this hole. So, uh, But I'm not doing it over again. So that's where it's going to live on my tractor. But if you guys are doing it, pay attention to the starter. You know, really, 
going ahead and move on my spot on my part but that's the way it goes sometimes all right guys that concludes the install hope you learned something i hope it helped you out uh, hit the subscribe button and the like button and if you guys want to see anything else stick it in the comments i'm pretty bored winter's here i don't have a whole lot going on so uh if you put it down in the comments what you guys are looking to do maybe i'll pick it up and i'll do a how-to video thanks again have a good christmas